Welcome to learning how to do change management at ASU using ServiceNow. In this video, we'll give you an overview of the change management process. We'll talk about some enhancements to that process. We'll talk about creating a change record, how to implement that change, and how to close the change. We use change management at ASU when something, typically a configuration item, in the IT service needs to be changed. Our goal is for that change to result in fewer incidents, not to make more troubles where there weren't before. But the changes are planned, documented, approved, happen in the right time frame, and are communicated properly. There are two other modules in ServiceNow that relate to the change management module. We keep track of when configuration items break and need to be fixed right away in the incident management module. Whenever we're looking for the root cause for those incidents, we do that in problem management. When we find a root cause, we can find a solution. And that solution is implemented in the change management module. We're making a few enhancements to our business process as we implement ServiceNow. Namely, we're going to change some of our types of changes. We're going to add risk assessments, checking for conflicts, and changing our change windows. Those are the time frames in which we can implement changes. Prior to using ServiceNow, we had high impact, low impact, pre-approved, and emergency changes. As we've begun to use ServiceNow, all changes have been defined as being normal. Fairly quickly, some changes will be identified as being routine, meaning there isn't an approval process for them and that they happen on a regular basis. We'll also have emergency changes. Those are changes that have to be implemented right away. In order for a change to be identified as routine, it must be earned and improved by the Change Approval Board. Guidance will be provided by the CAB on the requirements for making a change routine. Another process of enhancement is the risk assessment. This is a survey of questions that pops up when you create a record, and it helps you define the potential impact and the expected impact. Once you've filled out the survey, you click on a link to execute the risk calculation. Depending on that calculation, more or fewer approvals will be needed for the change. Another process enhancement is the ability to check for conflicts. One check that we do is to ensure that the scheduled change falls within a scheduled maintenance window and does not occur during a blackout window. Another type of conflict that we check for are for other activities that center around the same configuration item that you're planning on changing. This helps us not have two changes simultaneously that might cancel each other out, affecting the same CI. Our change windows are also being modified. The weekend maintenance will be Friday 9 p.m. through Sunday noon. Regular Friday evening system maintenance will remain as scheduled. For weekday maintenance, these are for low and medium impact changes that don't require service disruption. That's from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Routine changes will happen during this window. If you have an existing service level agreement that has a different change window, contact the change approval board. Change management will have a workflow, meaning that some changes will require approval. When we started the pilot, every single change would have to go through the entire process. Change requester, manager, change approval board, and then be scheduled. As we're starting to make sense of all the different types of changes that we do in this new system, some changes will still require that. If the change has a very high or high impact, then all four steps of the workflow are required. Change requester, manager, cabin scheduled. If the change has just a medium or low risk, then the workflow would be change requester, manager, and scheduled. For routine changes, just the change requester, and then it would go straight to schedule. When you create a change record, there are several steps that you'll go through. You'll start a new record in ServiceNow. You'll select the CI in the category. You'll add a short description, the proposed schedule, fill out the risk assessment, and execute the risk calculation. You'll check for conflicts, and then you'll save the record. The approval process we talked about in the workflow can be seen by clicking on the workflow link. If a manager rejects the change, it will go back into draft state, and the, you as the initiator can make changes. 
If the cab rejects the change, then it gets canceled and you'll have to create a new change request. If you're an approver, you'll get an email where you can go in and view the change as well as approve or reject it. If you're in ServiceNow, you can go to the My Open Items application and look at the My Approvals list and do your approval or rejection from there. Once the change has been approved, the approval field will be changed to approved, the state will be set to scheduled, and the assignment group will be assigned based on the CI. A change implementation task will be added to the record, and this is the item that will be completed. This is the item that will be completed to tell ServiceNow that the change has been successfully completed. The assignment group for that task is, is assigned based on the configuration item, and an email is sent to everyone in that group. Someone from the group will be able to go in. Someone from the group can open the task and assign it to an individual. That individual will be able to see it in the Assign to Me list on My Open Items in ServiceNow, and they'll also get an email. While you're working on the task, you can set it to Work in Progress. Document activity in the work notes. Every time you save, of course, that will be put in the activity log. When the task is complete, you select Close Task. Once all of the tasks associated with a change record are done and are marked Close Complete, then the owner of the change record will go in, set the actual work start and end date, and click on the Complete Change button in the change record. The change management group will find that record in the Ready for Closure list. They'll review it, put their own notes in the Closure tab, and then click Close Change. Once they do that, your change record will appear in the closed list from the change application. And that's an overview of the change management process using ServiceNow at ASU. Please take a look at the other videos about using ServiceNow to manage change records.